Hello world and welcome back. My name is Ross and this is my implementation of Network. It's part of Harvard CS50 web programming course. Written primarily in JavaScript and Python using the Django framework, this application, which I've called Bleater, is a simple, muskless re-implementation of Twitter. Upon registering or logging into the app, we are initially taken to our site's index page. Using the navbar buttons found here at the top of the page, we can navigate to different parts of the website. Here we can create a new post, we can see our previous posts, we can see all posts from all users, and finally we can see the posts from the users we are currently following. We'll kick things off by creating a new post, or to use this app's terminology, a bleat. To do this, we click the new bleat button found here in the navbar, and up pops a simple web form with a text area and submit button. Fairly intuitive to anyone that's used social media before, we simply insert our desired text into the text box and bleat it out into the world by clicking the submit button. You'll see that upon submission, we are automatically redirected to the app's all posts page. As the name suggests, this page displays all posts from all users. You'll also notice that the post we created just a few seconds ago is displayed right here at the very top of the stack. For each bleat on this page, we can see its author, the time it was posted, the post's text, and, depending on who the author is, one or two buttons. On the left-hand side of the card is a button to like the post. Next to the heart is a number showing how many users have liked the post thus far. You'll see that when the like button is clicked, the button turns red and the number increases by one. If we were to click the button again to unlike the post, the button reverts to its original state. The second optional button is for editing a post. This option is only available if the post was created by the current logged in user. By clicking this button, the text is replaced with a text area field. Here, we can change the bleat's text, and after clicking the Save button, the text is permanently changed by updating the app's backend database. At the very bottom of our page, you'll finally notice that the website makes use of Django's inbuilt pagination functionality, with 10 bleats rendered per page and forwards-backwards buttons for navigation. Moving on, we can see all of the posts by users we are currently following. At the moment, it appears we are just following Baz. Let's try following someone else. By returning to all posts, we can select another user. Let's try super user here. And although this profile looks quite similar to the pages we've seen before, a user's profile page has three primary differences. Firstly, the page only shows posts from this user. Secondly, the page shows how many accounts this user is following and how many it is followed by in return. And finally, you'll notice a follow button next to the profile's username. Click it and we follow the user, click it again and we unfollow them. To prove this works, we click follow and if we return to the following page, we can now see all of the bleats by Baz and by super user. So that was a front end. Let's quickly jump into our text editor to see the spaghetti running this application. As before, we have a fairly typical Django file structure. Here are our HTML files. We have a layout file for common elements and seven other pages corresponding to our different views. Pick it a page at random. Here is the block of code which is looped for each bleat and below it is our pagination code. Between our script tags at the bottom of our pages, we have our JavaScript functions tied into our create, edit, like, and follow buttons. As always, tying this together is our Python code stored in the views.py file. This file contains both our views functions, but also our API functions to update our database as required. So there we have it for now. My implementation of Network is part of CS50's web programming with Python and JavaScript probably my most complicated and complete project thus far. As before, my source code and a write-up of my experience with this PSET can be found in the video's description below. Five down, just one more to go. My name is Ross, see you all next time.